Hello everyone and welcome to the comparison between the Canon EOS R3 versus R5 and EOS R6. I would like to find an answer on which camera fits better to you. Because there's a lot of money at stake here. 6,500 euros for the R3, 4,500 for the Canon EOS R5 and 2,500 for the EOS R6. So let's get started. If you want to test one of these three bodies, or preferable all of them, before you buy, you should take a look at objektivvermietung.de. Whether it's a body, a drone or a lens, you'll find a lot to make a photographer's heart beat faster. If you want to support my channel, you're welcome to buy the body, the lens, the memory card or the tripod using the link in the video description. I say thank you in advance. One thing that stands out immediately is the size of the bodies. The R5 and the R6 have roughly the same body, fits equally well in the hand and the little finger dangles in the air. The R3 feels like a flyweight if you've ever held a 1DX in your hand. On the body of the R3 you have two triggers, one for horizontal and one for vertical shots. The R3 has room for the LPE19 battery with its 2750 mAh. The R5 and the R6 run with the LPE6 and H battery. If you're switching from a 5D Mark II, 3, 4 or 6D Mark II, you can still use your own battery. With the R3 we are able to take well over 2500 photos and videos on one battery charge without any problems. I can record an average of about 45 minutes with the R5 and R6 in 4K at 50 frames per second and around 800 to 1000 photos. The R6 has a mode dial to change modes and the R5 and R3 have a backlit head mounted display. I was positively surprised that Canon managed to illuminate some buttons after decades of photography. At 4500 euro for the R5, this should have been standard in my opinion. There's a hot shoe for speed lights, external microphones and monitors. You can adjust the control ring of the Canon EOS R5 via the orange menu to change the aperture, ISO or shutter speed. I use it to switch the focus field. The electronic viewfinders have different resolutions, of which the R3 has the best one. For me personally, the R3 doesn't feel heavy, at least as long as there is no fat telephoto lens attached. At 1015 grams, the R3 weighs just under 270 grams more than the R5 and R6, including the battery. Finally, we can turn the displays of all mirrorless cameras 180 degrees towards us. With a resolution of over 4 megapixels, the R3 gives you a good overview over the sharpness of your shots and you can make all settings via touch. The resolution of the R6 is unfortunately only 1.6 million pixels and that of the R5 just under 2.1 million. If you need something light and good, you won't go wrong with the R5 and R6. About the same size and weight, fast autofocus and 4K video up to 60 frames per second. The R3 can do that too, but it doesn't fit as easily in your camera bag, weights a bit more, but seems to be indestructible. They all have dust and splash water protection. People often ask me, what are these little red pins on the camera? These are the holders for my carrying strap and whist strap. I can highly recommend them to everyone. You can find the link in the video description. The R5 shines with 45 megapixels, the R6 with just under 20 and the R3 with 24. Those of you who value resolution will be well served by the R5. Those who want to spend less and consider 20 megapixels sufficient will make a good choice with the R6. You will soon find out what the R3 makes so special. But first let's have a look at a few sample photos in comparison. Let's move on to the lenses. In this round we tested all bodies with the RF 35mm, RF 16 STM, 
24 to 105 f4 L lens, 70 to 200, and the 50 millimeter 1.2 L lens. Can I recommend switching from EF to RF? Well, some lenses have become much lighter and more compact, and the 50 millimeter 1.2 is just twice as big and heavy. I started with my EOS R back then with my EF lenses and quickly decided to go for the RF versions. Why? Above all, the autofocus is simply smoother and quieter, at least in video mode. For photos, I find it almost irrelevant. But the crucial difference is, of course, also the weight. The EF lenses can be used without any problems, but they require a mount adapter, which in turn takes up weight and space. Unfortunately, the current version of the 70 to 200 mm 2.8 cannot be used with a teleconverter. But you can find light and inexpensive alternatives with other lenses. In addition, the RF lenses have a programmable RF ring that can be used, for example, to change the focus field, aperture, ISO or shutter speed with one turn. That was my opinion, but now it's time for you. Why do you keep the EF versions or choose for the RF versions? There's plenty of room for creative thinking below this video. Because we have two RF lenses on at the moment, let's take a look at how well or badly the bodies cope with the rolling shutter. So here's a comparison with all of them. I won't show any spectacular video shots in C-Log here because it would go beyond the length of this video. But if you like color grading, you can use all three bodies. The EOS R6 copes at 50 and 60 frames per second in 4K and doesn't offer all the settings you will find on the EOS R5 and R3. On the other hand, you can record 50 and 60 frames per second with an SD card in 4K, which unfortunately does not work with the R5 and R3. For this, you need a CFast Express card, which you are welcome to buy via the link listed in the video description in order to actively support my channel. Thank you. In addition, the R6 can only record videos in full automatic mode or in full manual mode. AV and TV are not available. The R5 even lets you record in 8K, which I personally don't use because 10 seconds means about 1 to 2 point gigabytes of data. And you also need the right computer. The same applies to the R3, which can even record in RAW. I'll put a few sample clips in the video description so you can make up your own mind. You can enhance your videos with time-lapse. All three models can produce a finished video in 4K and the R5 even in 8K. One thing only the R3 offers out of the box is Zebra. For stabilized shots, I use the DJI RSC2 and 3 in combination with the R5 and 6. Anyone who can use the R3 is welcome to leave a comment on how that works. One thing I missed with the EOS R was slow motion video recordings with autofocus. The R6 does that in full HD and the R5 and R3 even in 4K. 10 seconds equals about 1 gigabyte with a maximum of 120 frames per second. A feature you can see in almost every review on my channel. Ideal for sports, art and technology. An 
EOS R5 using its internal microphone in full automatic mode using the 14 to 35 millimeter lens f4 ISO 200 and the only thing which is a little bit disappointing is that I had to use now the CFast Express card of the Canon EOS R3 because I cannot record in 4K50 using an SD card. Canon EOS R6 using its internal microphone together with the 14 to 35 millimeter lens. Yeah, that's the audio test. And I'm recording now in 4K50 using an SD card and not a CFast Express card, which doesn't feature, uh, which is not a feature of the Canon EOS R6 anyways. That's an audio test using the Canon EOS R3 in full automatic um, audio control. Uh, the aperture of 4, ISO 250 using the 14 to 35 millimeter lens. Yeah, we are on our way to the European Central Bank because in front of this huge bank there is a skate park with a lot of people moving. And by the way, we are filming at the moment using the Canon EOS R3, which is an ideal camera for taking sports. And that's why we are on our way to that skate park. Maybe one or the other one is willing to give us some sample files and uh, we're going to take some pictures of them. Now that we are standing at a large skate park in Frankfurt, we can directly test the out of focus and tracking. You should definitely have the right memory card at hand with a CFast Express card. The whole thing is the most fun because 200 pictures in a RAW, in RAW, without buffer problems are no problem at all for all models. The R6 shoots at 12 frames per second and if you only shoot JPEG, you can take up to a thousand photos at one time with the right memory card. The R5 with its 45 megapixels also manages 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter. So both models can be easily used for sport. If you're primarily into wildlife and sport photography, you'll quickly take the R3 to your heart. Thanks to the electronic shutter, you have the possibility to make the camera glow with 30 frames per second. According to the manufacturer, the buffer should be enough for almost 500 raw shots. On this day, I was not able to exhaust the buffer of all cameras. As a brief objection, now that you have seen so much, what I miss with the R5 and R6 is the electronic focal length display. Yes, exactly this one here. Simply top and long overdue. A bonus point for the EOS R3. The display is particularly helpful, in my opinion, when taking photographs and filming, perhaps even via an external monitor or through the electronic viewfinder. Of course, photographers should also get their money worth. Those who want to buy one of the bodies and are willing to invest well over two and a half thousand euro will also be satisfied with the image quality. Whether HDR, interval shooting or RAW for post-processing, in any case, photography is a lot of fun. If you're traveling a lot, you should think about a power bank with power delivery. Because with that, all three bodies can be charged on the go. Of course, I'll link you my choice in the video description. I haven't taken the battery out of my camera for a long time now because I charge my cameras either on the road or at my desk via the anchor power port. And since it's already dark, let's take a look at the low light performance. There must be a reason why the EOS R3 is not so cheap. The ISO can be pushed up to 204,800 for photos and 102,400 
for videos. More megapixels means more noise. So the limit for photos is 100, 2400 on my EOS R5 and 51200 for videos. If you want to get the most out of your EOS R6, you can also get up to ISO 200 4800. Now you can see how well the bodies perform. You are welcome to view the sample files via the link listed in the video description. All cameras have a 35mm sensor. Thanks to the right settings and a nice lens with a fast aperture, you get a beautiful bokeh. I would also say that it makes no difference which model you use. Since we just talked about background blur, I wanted to show you some portraits. I prefer to use the EOS R5 or R6 for this, simply because the EOS R3 is not my camera and of course is much heavier and clunkier. On the other hand, it has two triggers, which you can also have on the other two models with an additional battery grip for just under 300 euros as an original. Of course, there are also cheap alternatives. Large amounts of data can be downloaded directly from the R3's body via LAN without having to remove the memory card. Portraits look super nice with all cameras. The important thing, of course, is the right lens. My favorite is the 50mm 1.2 and the 70-200mm 2.8. Sometimes I just have the 35mm 1.8 STM and the EOS R6 with me. So which camera should you take? Do you need megapixels? Then go for the EOS R5. Would you rather get one or two good lenses for your money and the 20 megapixels are enough? Then you should go for the EOS R6. Is your main job a photographer, possibly in the field of animal photography, sports? And does money play a minor role in your life or in your company? Then the EOS R3 is definitely worth it. I still advise you to test your desired body first, perhaps with one or two suitable lenses, simply to see whether you miss one or the other feature or don't need it all. Follow the link to objektivvermietung.de. I think the main arguments for one or the other camera all have been said. I am curious to know what I have forgotten or what is important for you. There's plenty of space for your comments below this video. Let's summarize. You will definitely have to spend somewhere between 3000 and 8000 euros if you want to get one or the other body with a lens. Then there are things like the right backpack, a tripod and of course the right memory card. Since I do more filming than photography, I'm very happy with the EOS R5. What I find amazing about the R3 when filming are the newly added buttons with which you can change the focus field very softly. Plus 4K 50 and 60 and even slow motion with out of focus. Simply a dream.
The R6 can do that too, despite the minimal crop factor and fewer video settings. On the other hand, slow motion recordings are only possible in Full HD, which doesn't bother me personally. After all, it saves space on my memory card. The photos all look great, you can get great dynamics for HDR shots with all camera bodies, but the R3 stands out even more. It depends on how many megapixels you need. I produce most of my content with the EOS R5 and R6 and I can't think of a better camera for my work at the moment. Remember to check out the photos in the video description below so you can get a full picture on which camera is better for you. If you would like to support my channel, all the things are listed below. Also follow me on Telegram and Instagram. All the best from the heart of Germany. See you very soon and tschüss.